Welcome to Democracy Comes Alive. I'm Bob Crawford. I'm here today with Bob Weir. Bob, how are you doing today? Just fine, thanks. <laughs> I just uh, I just crawled out of the the ocean here in Northern California. It's bracing, but it's uh, it's doable. Well, uh, it's, it's great to be with you, and and it's great to see you're doing so well out there. Um, glad you're you're surviving the fires, okay, and and all, and all that stuff. Uh, we're here today to talk about voting and the upcoming election. Bob, I was curious, what, do you remember the first time you voted? I think it might have been back in 68 or thereabouts, and uh, I think I voted for Bobby Kennedy in a primary. And we were expecting to, uh, expecting that to, we were, Pretty much expecting him to win the presidency, and that didn't work out. Um, I think I've voted in. I think I've missed two or three elections, uh, never a presidential one. Um, I might have missed two or three uh, uh, of the in between elections, but I, you know, I've all, I, you know, I probably was on the road and in. in, in uh, and didn't get around to getting my uh, my absentee ballot situation together. But in general, I'm pretty fastidious about it. So how do you vote? Do you vote in person or do you vote by absentee these days? Uh, well, I guess I'm voting by absentee this time around. Uh, generally speaking, it's just easier for me to go down to the poll and just do it. It's kind of nice. I kind of like doing that. When, when you're when you're researching candidates, uh, how how do you go about that? How do you go about figuring out, you know, who who is the candidate that that suits the things that I believe, the things that I who's just out there talking about the, the issues that I feel are most important. Uh, well, I listen. You know, I I I, I go online a lot and uh, and read what they have to say and, and watch the clips of what they have to say. And I'm disappointed a lot by the fact that nobody speaks in much depth these days. They, uh, they, uh, everybody seems to be focused on doing, you know, short little, what they call sound bites. <clears throat> and, uh, and that, you know, that in no way uh, can cover a lot of the, uh, the depth of, many of the issues that I'd like to hear more about. But some sometimes I do go into further depth and I'm I'm happy to hear that. I'm looking forward to these coming debates, uh presidential and vice presidential debates. Well, we, to do that then. Well, one of the important uh uh things about dem democracy comes alive is is they're not just about voting today, but they're about informing people about, about the history of voting in this country. And the, the 26th Amendment was ratified in 1971. That changed the voting age from 21 to 18. Back then, you were in the Grateful Dead. How did you guys promote voter engagement? Did you back then? What, what were the ways? Did you feel when elections were in the air and, and when, you know, when, when, that, when it was election season? Was it something that you as a band were out there trying to encourage people to get out and vote? Or, or has it just changed so much with as far as bands being involved in in voter drives? Well, I gotta say that uh, back in the '60s, um, in the early years of the Grateful Dead, we never we never promoted uh, political awareness much. Um, we didn't feel it was our place to do that. Um, as I've gotten older, my views have changed on that, and uh, and also the times have changed. Uh, we're in the, we're more in touch as a uh, as a as a culture as a society these days than than we were back then. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have uh, uh, you know mobile phones. We didn't have all that kind of stuff, and so. It seems that the, uh, the, the these new times probably dictate a new uh, a new awareness of uh, the interrelationship of uh, of all of us as individuals in a in a in a society and and 
in that regard, it seems also appropriate that we be a little more forward about uh, about. You know, it seems everybody's being a little more forward about their uh, their views, political and otherwise, and. Uh, so you know, I'm I'm part of that soup now too. Yeah, and and as musicians um, and guys who are normally on the road traveling right now, we would have organizations maybe coming to our shows and in the parking lots and and registering voters. What can you and I do, you know, in lieu of being out on the road to try to bring people into the system? Well. What we're doing right now is part of it. Uh, I'm not sure how many new ears or unregistered voters we're, uh, we're, we're, we're addressing here, but there are bound to be a few of them. And, um, and here's hoping that uh, in any case, that anyone who, who is listening to this, who's, uh, who's, who's watching what we're doing or listening to what we're saying, uh, we'll go out and uh, and reach out to their friends and say, "Hey, listen, let's uh, let's make the changes we need to we need to see." Because right now, you know, we're we're addressing uh, probably a, a younger audience than uh, than than <clears throat> oh, say uh, the major news networks are uh, are, mm -hmm. are addressing, and. These younger folks, this is their future. Uh, you know, they're the ones with the most at stake in in, uh, in the coming election and uh, and subsequent elections because they have the most years in front of them. And uh, what gets nailed in now, a lot of it's going to stay nailed in. So um, it's really important, uh, it, as far as I can see, for those folks to uh, and I've got daughters who are, you know, 18 and, and uh, 22. And uh, <clears throat> I want to see I want to see a lot of kids voting and uh, a lot of younger folks voting in, in, the, in these elections because it's going to make a difference for my kids. Um, and it will also make a difference in, in our culture because uh, because younger people tend to be more altruistic. Than, uh, uh, and more idealistic than uh, than uh, older folks do. I think I think that's been amply uh, demonstrated uh, over the years, over the centuries, over the millennia. Uh, it's just the way things are, and uh, humans tend to be. And I would like the politics and policies to reflect a little more altruism. And a little more idealism, and uh, that's where you kids come in. How how engaged are your daughters? Can I ask? Uh, you know, they're not oh, you know, overly cranked up about it, but they're 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 doing it. They're they're talking to their friends. They're uh, they're they're getting the word around. Bob, it's so hard for us, I think, sometimes as musicians, uh, you, there are issues that mean that mean a lot to me. There are issues that mean a lot to you. We want to get people out and vote, but we want to encourage people in a nonpartisan way on, on, on one level, right? It's how, do, how does a musician uh, engage people to come out when we may not all agree about what's the most important issue to vote on or the, 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 the qualified, the most qualified candidate to, to elect at any level, be it presidential, you know, senatorial, think about the primaries that happened um, not too long ago. You know, you had, you know, eight or nine, 10 people from the same party running a lot of, they, they, um, they all kind of had similar stances. How do, how do we as musicians try to, to break out of partisanship and, and bring people together as best we can during terribly polarizing times? Well, it all reverts to the, uh, the premise that democracy is an attempt to make policy out of uh, 
out of what the the majority feel should policy should be with you know and our our democracy is built around the that premise plus the addition the addition of things like the the senate and the electric the electoral college that aren't really all that representative of uh, of the greater whole of uh, of america but rather uh, but rather <clears throat> favor uh, favor agricultural America. Um, and that, you know, so it's, it's, it's a balance, but you have to, uh, you have to come at it with the understanding that, uh, that not everybody gets their way all the time, but <clears throat> you still have to work with the system and, uh, and you have to pull together once the, once the votes are cast and once the decision is uh, rendered, uh, then the country has to pull together, and if if uh, if you didn't get your way in in the election, um, it's time for you to uh, buck up and 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 uh, put your shoulder to the wheel and pull anyway, and and uh, and meanwhile look to the next election to get your way. Um, but it, it has to be done with the understanding that uh, that it's you know it's majority rules. Indeed. Bob, it's been so great talking to you today about Democracy Comes Alive. I want to say Democracy Saves America, and hopefully Democracy Will Save America. And I think, I think that we, we just want to, both of us want to impress on people that you need to plan your vote out. You know, go online, make sure you're registered, make sure you know where you need to go to vote if you're going to vote in, in person, uh, know the voting hours. Uh, Prepare to be there a long time, particularly if you're going to vote on election day. Uh, but maybe, maybe it's better to vote in advance. And uh, also, if you're going to get a mail-in ballot, do it far enough in advance. Make sure you can you apply for it early. You get it either you hand it in in person to the clerk of court, or you, or you get it or you mail it in uh, well in advance of election day because it's going to be a humdinger. Yeah. Now there's a. There are several sites. One that I'll, I'll uh, that I'll enumerate here uh, or specify here is a uh, is a uh, headcount. Uh, it's called headcount. You can go to the headcount site. You can anything you need to know about voting where you are. You can find you can find that information there. There are a number of sites that uh, that will that will offer that. Uh, headcount is particularly easy to navigate, and. Uh, the important thing is you get registered in time to vote, and then you make sure that you stay registered because in some states, um, the uh, the people in power um, like to purge the voter rolls and uh, and 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 uh, eliminate uh, people that they say are that they seem to think are dead or uh, or uh, or. <laughs> Basically, it, it it boils down to unlikely to vote for them, and seeing as they're in power, they uh, they want to keep it that way, and they're not anxious to see you vote and vote them out of office. So you 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 <clears throat> you need to register and vote, and you, you need to you need to make sure that you stay registered because of that kind of hanky panky, and um, and you can do that all through headcount. Numerous other places. I think the Washington Post has a has a site up, and uh, I'm not sure who else, who all else has, but I've seen those two. Bob, you've you've been you've been involved with Headcount for many years. Oh yeah, uh, I guess I'm a founding member of uh, of that outfit, and it just seems you know, for the longest time, I've I've uh, I've been of the opinion that uh, people need to vote, particularly young people, and it doesn't, you know, some younger folks say, well, you know, I just uh, or think to themselves, well, you know, I haven't had real, a lot of life to spend uh, or a lot of years to spend studying the issues. Um, yeah, but you also have your gut feelings in your. Uh, and whatever it is, your compass uh, points you in the direction of and, and that's what most people are going from going by anyway. So go and do it. 
You know what concerns me, Bob, is that um, it seems like the younger generations are the most entrepreneurial we've seen in forever. They um, they come up with uh, they start their own charities and foundations. They're they're real. I mean, go getters, right? Um, but they are turned off by politics because of what they've seen from politicians. The phone, you know, sometimes a lot of politicians don't come off as genuine characters. Um, and they get turned off and they don't want to go into politics themselves. But I think, you know, guys like me and you, we can impress upon them to say, you've got amazing ideas. You've, you've got, you have your, you understand technology like no one else. But if you don't have your hands on the levers of power, you're not going to be able to make all the great change in the world that, that, that you, that you are equipped and that we're, we're accounting on you to, to do so. You know, uh, if you're a young person, it this does matter to you. Take it step by step. Register and vote. And in so doing, maybe some of the changes that you want to see will happen. And maybe that uh, that atmosphere that uh, currently surrounds politics uh, will begin to change. And you might even see your way clear to uh, running for office or, or uh, assuming some of that uh, assuming some of that responsibility well from north carolina from california we uh hope to see you out there voting and um remember go to headcount uh get your ballot in early and and uh make sure you know that you're registered you stay registered you know where to go and you're prepared to do it in advance do Thanks it. So Thanks, Bob. Thank you.